how to configure shell check in Jenkins. When you first start writing Jenkins jobs, there's a pretty good chance that you might be calling some existing shell scripts. However, unlike traditional programming languages, validating shell scripts can be a bit of a challenge. You can't just take your shell script, run it through an IDE, and look for all the problems. Instead, you typically find those problems when something is running, and at that point, it's too late. To address this issue, let's take a look at how we can use shell check with Jenkins to validate our scripts. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.332.3, and attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent that has shell check installed on it. Down in the description of this video is a link to a sample repository. Before we get started, let's take a look at shell check. We can find shell check, at least the UI version of it, at shellcheck.net. But if you scroll down, you can see that it's also available on GitHub. And when we take a look at it, we can see that the stable version, at least at the time of recording, is 0.8.0. Now, I am running CentOS as my agent, and I could have used Apple release to install shellcheck. However, the version of shellcheck that's available within Apple release is really old. So what I did is I downloaded and installed version 0.8.0 on the agent. How do you know that I actually installed that version? Well, let's take a look at our first Jenkins file. This is our sample repository, Jenkins example shell check. If we take a look at Jenkins file zero, what we're going to see is that we have a shell check help, and then we're also going to take a look at version and this color equals never. We'll take a look at the details of that in just a moment. So let's go ahead and set up a job to where we run Jenkins file zero. So we'll click on this. Let me copy my URL. Let's go back over to our controller. Let's add a new item called shell check pipeline. Click OK. We'll change this to from SCM. Git. We'll paste in our URL. We'll change our branch to main. And our script path is going to be Jenkins file dash zero. We'll click on save and then click on build now. And what we'll see from the output from build now is that we're connecting to agent one, which is our agent. And then from the output with shell check, what we're going to see is we see our help. And then we also see our version, which is 080. Now let's take a look at the help here for just a moment. The way that we're going to interact with shell check is we're going to pass in some options right after shell check, and then we'll pass in the files. In our case, we only have a single file that we want to use shell check to validate. Now we can see that we can set color, which is one of the things that we have down here below. If you were to run shell check within an interactive terminal, it's going to use color. But since we have no color available to us in our console output, I'm passing in color never. That way, when we take a look at the output, everything is just plain text and no extra added characters that usually comes along with ANSI color. We can see that we can change the output format and we can add in special checks and we can also set severities. Keep that one in mind. Now let's go over to our repository and take a look at Jenkins file one. What we're going to do is we're going to run shell check color never and we're going to check example-1sh. This example-1sh is right here in the repository. And this is just a randomized example of a shell script that I generated from clicking on load random example. So I clicked on that, copied it, put it over in my repository, and then we're just gonna be running this shell check against this script. So let's go ahead and go back over to our console and let's change our shell check from dash zero to dash one. With dash one, we'll click on build now. Let's see what changes in the output. As it runs, we're saying shell check, color never, example one sh. It starts complaining about things that are missing. These are warnings. So here's specific shell check warning. This is a warning, this is a warning, all the way through. And at the very end, there are links to wiki pages at shell check to give us details about each of these warnings. Now you'll also notice that the job completed as an error. It returned an exit code of one. So from our job perspective, shell check is red, it failed. What if I don't care about warnings? Let's assume for a moment that I just want my warnings to be okay. The only ones I really care about are errors. Well, let's go take a look at Jenkins file two. So going back to our repository, when we take a look at Jenkins file two, we're running the same command, except now we have added in severity equals error. And what this tells shell check is that we only are concerned about failing this check if what shell check finds are specifically errors. 
So let's go back and change our job one more time to Jenkins file dash two. We'll click on save, click on build now. When we take a look at output of three, what we're going to see is we have shell check, color never, severity error, example one SH, and nothing is output because based on the previous run, we know that every one of the quote unquote errors that were there were actually just warnings. So since we had no specific errors in our shell script, then shell check passed it because we passed in a specific severity of error. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.